Ever since TikTok and Instagram really started to gain steam as the new shiny thing to use to grow a following, artists have been really resistant to getting on board. We're artists, not all of us want to become content creators, and that's okay. Filming videos can be really hard. Maybe you're really introverted or you don't want to get a ton of like specialized camera gear. That's totally fine, but you might be missing out. I recently had a chance to sit down and chat with Marlene Vega, a Mexican-American artist who is as shy and introverted as the rest of us, but has still managed to take her art part-time with just her phone, thanks to short-form video. In the interview, we dive deep into how to sustainably post short-form content across multiple platforms and how Marlene manages her time as someone with a full-time job outside of art. This was a really great chat and I hope you guys enjoy. Hey Marlene, thank you so much for um, chatting with me today. Hi Kelsey, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, one thing that really interests me about your journey as an artist is all of your growth on Instagram. You have over 100,000 followers, which congratulations, but I'm really interested in learning about like your experiences on the platform, like how you became like so popular on Instagram. Okay, so it's been quite a journey. Um, I started posting like art related stuff on Instagram back in 2019. Um, I kind of just picked it up as a hobby and I just started posting on my personal account. So I had already, um, I had like 300 followers, like friends in high school, college. And I just started posting on that account um, because at the time it was just a hobby that I wanted to pick up. Um, like many artists, um, we mostly grew up like being creative kids. Uh, but personally for me, I did not have the privilege to pursue it as a career. So I kind of left that part behind um, as I like transitioned into university and uh, got a degree so I could get a more stable job. And uh, it wasn't until like I finally finished university, got myself a full-time job. And it wasn't until then that like I finally had some free time and I was like, I need a hobby. Um, it was pretty, I guess, I guess once I started working full-time and not being part of that academic world that I was so used to, it felt like something was missing. Like I was kind of like, oh, is this the rest of my life? Just going to work, paying bills. Um, and that's when I was like, okay, I think I should get back into like art and maybe try to learn a new medium. So like back then I, yeah. I would draw, but um, that was like the extent that uh, my art um, journey was. Uh, and so I picked up watercolors and from there, like I slowly started like to teach myself um, by just practicing and watching videos on YouTube. Uh, and that started back in 2019. And once 2020 came and we were like on lockdown and pretty much had like extra time, um, I was painting like every day and I just started posting more and more. Um, and that's how, like, gradually my account started to grow, um, which was not intentional. And it kind of just happened for me. Um, and that's when, like, I realized, like, oh, maybe this could actually be something. Because um, obviously, like, when I was smaller, I was, like, persuaded into thinking that art couldn't be a realistic career for me, something stable where I could pay my bills. And um, yeah. It wasn't until like I saw my accounts like starting to grow that I was like, oh, this could be something like realistic. And uh, I just kind of just went for it and just kept going. Um, That's amazing. So what was that like journey like for you? I mean, you mentioned that you were just kind of starting out. You wanted it as a hobby and then it kind of like spiraled into the thing that you're not doing part time. Like what was that? Um that growth journey like and like what were you posting and like what was your kind of your overall strategy in terms of growth on Instagram as you started developing this following um so when I was first starting off I just thought like okay I just need to post completed artworks and that's 
all I was posting. So like, if you go just like, if you go scroll to my account back in 2020, it's all just static photos. Cause that was before like reels and video content was introduced. Um, and it's all like completed art pieces. And, um, that's what I thought I had to do to grow and like have people discover my art. Uh, and it wasn't until like the middle of like 2020 where I was like, this is not sustainable. I can't be pumping out a new piece every day in hopes of like, yeah. people seeing it. And um, I felt like, I feel like back then Instagram was way easier to grow. Um, the algorithm was really different. And um, I guess it kind of favored us artists back then, it feels like. Um, and as it slowly started to change and we slowly started to see like less engagement, um, it, I guess for me, it was kind of discouraging. I was like, why am I doing all this uh, work to have a completed art piece to post and to like cross my fingers and hope that it does well? Uh, so that's when like I slowly started to, I guess, shift into more uh, like video content. And that's yeah. when like reels started getting introduced. And um, I was kind of like trying not to go that route because I was like, I'm not a content creator. I'm an artist. Like, I don't want to have to do all that just to be seen and have my like, work seen. Uh, so for some time, I kind of like, pushed it away but eventually I was like okay if I really want art to be something like um that will pay my bills and something that I could continue to do uh, for years to come I need to adapt and just try it out and so when it, um, it was I think 20 yeah 2021 I was doing more like uh, video content uh, on top of like static photos and slowly um and my account kind of like started to just um flatline I was like I think at 25,000 followers for a really long time to many people that's like whoa that's a lot but I guess to me I kind of I, I get of, it I understand yeah. <laughs> like seeing it flatline when you have previously been growing like it sucks yeah yeah and it stayed like that for like a year so like I kind of felt like so I feel like imposter syndrome, especially because like I knew my situation. I wasn't really making that much from my art. Like, yeah, I had a lot of followers, but when it came down to like shop updates, it wasn't, um, uh, it, I wasn't getting the numbers that my peers were getting. Like I would see mm. packing a hundred plus orders for the shop update or I got 300 orders for this shop update and I would be over here like I'm only getting like five which obviously like I was appreciative of like everyone supporting me but it kind of right. felt like is this really something I should be pursuing like I have these big numbers quote unquote but it's not translating to income or something that can mm. sustain me in the long run uh, and when that started to happen, like, so that was 2021, like, pretty much the whole year. Uh, every time I had a shop update, it didn't go as well I, as I had anticipated, especially all the money I was putting in. Uh, I wasn't really seeing it returned um, or even evening out. Uh, so then 2022 20, comes around, and that's when I told myself, okay, well, I have this year to, like, prove to myself that this can be something I can pursue. So I'll try whatever I have to do to like grow my accounts um, in hopes that brands would start to notice me or discover me because I did notice that like a couple of peers would, uh, they would collab with other brands and I'm like, oh, that's a good source of income. Um, not having to rely on your shop to perform well just for you to pay your rent. Um, so yeah. to me, I was like, I want to get into like that area. Um, that way I'm not putting so much pressure on myself to like pump out new art for people to buy. Yeah. And, it can be exhausting. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was, I was pretty exhausting. So yeah, mid, uh, 
yeah, in, so summer of 2022, so last year, um, that's when I finally started to see my numbers grow. Um, and it was pretty like exciting because um, it had never really happened to me. Um, I never really had like videos go viral in that way where like an influx of uh, orders would come in. And so when that finally happened, it happened because of TikTok. So um, I was like, okay, this can be something I can actually pursue and will sustain me um, yeah. if, I, if I keep working on it. Interesting. I mean, I was looking at your numbers and like Instagram, like it shows you like how many like views that you get on a reel and like same with TikTok. Um, and you have much more like views and like kind of like active engagement, it seems on your Instagram, despite having like about the same amount of followers on across both Instagram and TikTok. TikTok is a little bit smaller, but have you noticed like a difference in conversion between the two platforms? Like is TikTok more effective at converting views to sales and Instagram, for example, like in your experience? In my experience, I think that, yeah, uh, TikTok um, does better for me when it comes to like promoting items and getting sales uh, each week. Uh, because back when uh, Instagram was like changing and I felt like, my account just like plateaued and I was no longer growing on there. I shifted my energy onto my TikTok account uh, because back then I, I wasn't really balancing all the platforms evenly. It was just way too much work. And so I was mainly focusing on Instagram. But when it was like slowly started to decline and uh, I was kind of getting over it, I hopped onto TikTok and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to post on there. Um, I feel like because at that time, my TikTok account was really small, uh, like less than 10,000 uh, followers on there. I felt um, like I could just post whatever I wanted. It didn't have to be like um, super aesthetic, uh, um, like overly edited or anything. Um, yeah, like more and, casual. Yeah. Yeah. And like if it flopped, like I didn't really care. Like if no one saw it, like it didn't affect me. But for some reason on Instagram, like, I don't know why, like, if a video didn't perform well or, like, a post didn't perform well, like, I felt like, oh, okay, I'm a failure. Um, and I guess just, like, the platforms, at least, at least back then for me, it felt like on Instagram, like, I should limit my postings. Like, I should only post, like, a painting one time. If I do it, like, more than twice, it's going to be, like, annoying for people or, like, people are going to get sick of whatever content I'm like repeatedly posting uh, versus TikTok. I feel like I could post my stickers like in 10 different videos. And uh, because not everyone sees your videos on TikTok, it's always like new audience. Um, For sure. I, I, and I didn't feel like, oh, people are going to like get tired of me and like unfollow me or something, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Because like there's the following tab on TikTok and the free tab. Um, and like, I'm always on my free page personally. And sometimes like, I'll be scrolling and I'll find like a video from my creator like I have followed and like want to see more from but like I haven't seen their stuff in like, a couple weeks or a couple days. And it's like, oh, that's cool. So if you had like double posted an art project or something, I, I never would have noticed. Um, that totally makes sense that reusability is like, a little bit more impactful there. Um, have you tried like, cross posting or like, posting the same art piece multiple times different formats on Instagram and like, has that kind of changed the um that like mental block for you when it comes to like posting and like having that I don't know big like pressure to perform? Yeah, so like going back to like a couple of years back, um, when it came to like posting or like a completed art piece, I literally like record my whole process and like clip it down to like what no more than thirty seconds, and then like show the final piece, show my whole process in like a Instagram reel. Um, and then for some reason, those would never perform well for me. So that's when I would get discouraged. But eventually mm -hmm. when I started to like shift and like just not care on what I posted on Instagram after like my TikTok was doing better, um, I started to just, yeah, reuse old clips. Um, if I came across an audio that I thought was funny or um, I wanted to use, I would just go back to like my photo uh, my gallery and like all my video clips on my phone and 
just get old clips and reuse them. So now, uh, like, I tend to reuse clips, even if it's been, like, weeks or months. Because most of the time, people don't even notice. And if they do, yeah. they, they're not going to tell me, like, hey, Marley, you already posted this. Um, I have yet to get that comment. If anything, I've got comments from people saying, like, oh, I really like how you're reusing your content. Like, And I was like, okay, cool. Some people do notice, but it's not like they they're annoyed of it or anything so i think that's like yeah a a great trick um that many creatives can uh, use and utilize um especially because it it can get kind of annoying having to record every single like art piece sometimes we just want the camera off and we don't have the energy to like bust it out and set it up and film every single bit of your process i feel that's so hard (laughs) I feel that's so hard. I feel like constantly. And so what I've really been liking doing, like when I make my own reels, like short form video content and stuff, is that I'll just like take like literally any clips. If I'm like bored for an hour, I'll make like 10 reels or something using clips that I already have. And that just like lowered the barrier and made it so much easier for me to actually post stuff because I hadn't posted on Instagram in like over a year. And I haven't posted on my personal Instagram like since like March of 2020. Like, I just, like, don't post at all on Instagram. But having that just, like, footage already there for me that I could just, like, put into Final Cut Pro and cut it down made it made it a lot easier. So it's awesome to hear that you're recycling stuff and, like, making it work for you. Are there formats that you really like on Instagram or on TikTok? Like, I know that you do POV stuff, you use trending audios. Um, what are the kind of, like, genres of content that you really like or that you like seeing on the platform in general in the art community? Um, for me, I... I, I enjoy like watching the like behind the scenes like process of a piece. Um, but since like now I feel like TikTok and like Instagram, they're more in into like short form video content, which is typically what less than ten seconds. So as far as like Instagram and TikTok, yeah. um, I yeah I think I enjoy like um, I guess more personal content. I feel like. Um, because I obviously I I do like seeing art pieces and stuff like that. But I guess when it's like a creator that I've been following for a while, it's kind of nice. I guess getting to know them a bit more, or like seeing the person behind um, the beautiful art piece, and just getting to know who they are. Uh, and I feel like because of that, um, I try to integrate that in what I post, and I feel like that's what has actually helped a lot. Like people feel more connected to me. Um, and whatever I end up like posting or like what new stickers I make like they'll end up supporting me but I feel like they end up connecting with like just me and like my life first and then my art comes next if that makes sense yeah yeah and I really like like how when you do like the POV stuff it is like a little personal snippet into your mindset or like a struggle that you're going through right now or like of anything going on in your life um and I really like that, that the personal touch that really kind of draws me into your content and lets me know more about you. And kind of in that same line of thought, have you ever um, tried like doing your own audios, like doing your own voiceovers over your reels? I know that like trending sounds are really important for growth, of course. But have you ever tried kind of like taking that personal element to the next level in terms of like the editing? Um, if I'm being really honest uh, and someone like my followers know, but like. I'm actually like super introverted and shy and I hate talking to the camera. Uh, That's why in the beginning, like I never posted pictures of myself. Uh, It was only art. Uh, In videos, yeah, it was like my hand was like the most people would see. Uh, Like I would have like those aesthetic shots where like they see the back of me or anything like that. But as like I slowly started to lean into like the video content and all of that, like I I knew that like I had to put myself out there and like start showing more of myself. Um, so I feel like I've slowly started to do that. Um, I guess especially with like YouTube and blogs because I I just get so nervous talking in front of the camera. So um, I feel like I'm slowly getting there. I'm not sure like how soon, um, but eventually I feel like I'll find myself making my own audio content and stuff like that yeah nice have you ever or like sorry um what am I saying I was the same way 
Um, I was like super, I'm, I still am really introverted. Like this is the most socialization I'm probably going to do today. Um, just cause like, it's like, this is, this is it for me. <laughs> this is all I want to <laughs> do. Um, I'm super introverted. Like socializing is kind of like exhausting after a certain point for me. Like I'm not one for house parties, like clubs, not my thing. Um, so I really feel you when you talk about kind of being more like shy and like introverted. And it's definitely a skill that I think that I've had to work a lot at to kind of be comfortable on camera. Um, and for me, it was just like a lot of, a lot of practice. Have you done anything to kind of um, help you get more comfortable in front of the camera aside from just like kind of forcing yourself to like, do you have any tips for folks that might be in your same shoes? Um, to be honest, <laughs> I don't really have any tips. I feel like the only thing driving me to push myself out there is just me wanting to make art uh, a more sustainable thing for me. Um, and I think that desire to want to like be able to like pay my rent with just like my artwork or stuff like that is what pushes me to get out of my comfort zone. Um, as far yeah, as like- totally valid motivation. Yeah, as far as like trying to be more comfortable in front of that camera um, or like talking, I'll just like, um, I guess, uh youtube wise i started making a bit more vlogs because that does force me to talk or like record voiceovers for that um or like if an opportunity comes to me where like i have to speak um i'll take it um even if i don't want to um so like a month ago i was approached by adobe photoshop for uh a collab and in that project, I had to do a voiceover. So I was super nervous, but I was like, okay, this is going to be a good opportunity. So I feel like that is what's driving me at the moment. Um, I'm not sure if that really counts as a tip or anything, but that's what's pushing no, me No, I mean, down. I feel like that's so totally valid. Like sometimes you have external stuff that you really want to achieve that kind of forces you to get out of your comfort zone and like do things that like are really anxiety inducing. So I feel that you're kind of allowing like your overarching goals to kind of push you forward and kind of overcome that um that fear like that resistance that totally makes sense um shifting over to youtube because you didn't mention like youtube and like doing vlogs and stuff i actually think i first discovered your content based off of this like studio ghibli um studio ghibli uh time lapse that you made of like where you studied i think it was a kiki's delivery yeah. service yeah, screen the one that blew up <laughs> yeah um, I think I found your content initially through that, but I noticed that um, you tend to be much more active on TikTok and Instagram. How have, I mean, I've experienced blowing up. It can be really nerve wracking and anxiety inducing and all of that kind of, how did you deal with that initial like burst of success after that blew up and like what, like what happened? Um, how did you, I don't know, how did you deal with that? <laughs> um, yeah, when that video blew up, it was like really unexpected um only because it was like i think my second video that i had posted on the channel and oh whoa um i remember i wasn't even going to post it because like uh i don't really like recording my whole art process because i already get nervous and then having a camera there like i know no one is there physically but i feel like i have people watching me um but uh, fast forward i ended up putting together um I ended up putting it together because my sister's like, just do it, just upload it. Um, and I was like, okay, I'll upload it. It wasn't like the best quality video. I was using a really old iPhone. And yeah, and I ended up putting it. Uh, months went by and it got like a couple of views. Um, I don't remember exactly, but it wasn't like over anything over a thousand. It was like a couple hundred views. and. I was excited and then one day uh I don't know like how long after I had posted it uh for sure like maybe like three months later I started like getting followers and I was like where is this coming from and then that's yeah where I noticed like oh my YouTube is getting subscribers uh, my YouTube channel is growing and uh yeah it was like uh, I was like shocked I because I did not expect it at all. I was like super new to the YouTube world, not expecting my account to grow anytime soon. And so yeah, once that blew up, I shortly after uh, 
I guess I had another video up already that was another paint with me. And I guess because uh, the other video blew up, people were looking at my channel. So like then this other video started to blow up and they were both like similar studio Ghibli paint with me. So that uh, makes sense why people started watching it. Uh, yeah. Then I got monetized on YouTube and I was like, oh, this is so cool. Um, and then I started like earning a bit of money because of those videos. Um, but because YouTube wasn't my priority, it wasn't something that I was planning to like be consistent with. It just, I just decided to record a video that time of that painting and post it. Um, I felt, I guess, a bit of pressure to start uploading more consistently on there. No, for sure. Yeah, makes sense. And then I just started to feel like uh, like a bit of self-doubt and like imposter syndrome because I'm like, I'm barely learning how to paint with gouache and now people are going to want to see like tutorial videos or like more videos from me so they can learn. Um, and at the time, like I did want to continue posting consistently, but I just couldn't. I did not have the time um, to manage everything. And so I just kept going at my pace. Like, I think I would post, like, one every couple of months. Uh, well, slowly, like, my channel started to, like, decline or, like, flatline. And um, which, for me, it was fine. Like, um, I didn't expect anything from it to begin with. Yeah. Um, and, like, you're thriving, doing your own thing with short form. And, like, it seems to be working pretty well. Yeah. Um, so, like, for, I was fine. But I guess. As the like months went by and like years and like I started to hate Instagram because of the changing algorithm and them pushing uh, video content. I'm like, okay, maybe I should hop over to YouTube. But I feel like I still haven't been able to like grasp um, how to like include it in my day to day and like manage editing and shooting. Because to me, I feel like I still struggle a lot with that. I don't really manage my time uh, well when it comes to like content creation uh, and then like if I don't uh, write it in a planner or like tell myself hey I'm gonna record this day like I end up not recording throughout the weeks or anything and I just don't post I feel you um <laughs> do you have I mean honestly like I was I was about to ask you a question about um time management because like I started my channel when I was a senior in college and I remember like I had a job that I was working. I was trying to apply for like other things. I was like writing my thesis. I was like taking classes and I was also like somehow posting a video every week. And I like when I think about that time, I'm like, what was I doing? Like how what kind of magical productivity powers did I possess that I had like since lost? Because now I post like maybe once a week and this is my job so like, I really have no mm -hmm. excuse but you work part-time um like you or you sorry you work full-time right and then you have this is like, your part-time thing um but you post like so consistently like I'm honestly like, I'm really impressed like I want to know how you do it because you post like every week um consistently on Instagram and TikTok it seems like from my perspective um maybe that's not necessarily true but I'm like amazed at your productivity powers like I, I want to learn your secrets not gonna lie um, I feel like, I guess for me, short form content is way easier and like transitioning to like long form as like vlogs and paint with me videos on YouTube has just been such a struggle. So for now, yeah, I've just been like focusing on Instagram and YouTube for that reason. And yeah, when it comes like for me for posting, I don't have a set schedule. I don't, um, like write it in a planner or anything, um, like, I would back then, like, a couple of years ago, um, when I was trying to be consistent with posting, back when I thought, like, you need to post every day if you want to be seen. Um, and, like, once I started taking um, Instagram, like, less serious, um, and I stopped overthinking on, like, what time should I post? What time are people going to see this video or this photo? Uh, once I, like, I threw that out the window and stopped caring. Um, I just post whenever I have the energy. So like during the week after I'm like off of work, um, I'm done with like my nine to five. Like I'm typically drained. I don't want to um, be sitting. Like I don't want to be sitting at my desk 
for another couple of hours painting because I was already there for eight hours of my day. Yeah. So typically I don't find myself painting during the week. And uh, it's not like till nighttime where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go chill out and lay in bed and watch or put something in the TV as background noise. I'll like start sc- scrolling through my phone. And if I come across anything that's like, um, I find like cool or like an audio that I like, I'll just like put a video together really quick and use some old content that I either filmed a week ago or like a couple of days ago. But typically I don't find myself like filming that day, putting it together that day and posting because I just gotcha. feel like extra work. And then I, uh, at least at that time, I would feel like it had to perform well because I put in so much so much energy that day to make this video and then if it flops like I feel crappy (laughs) so I try to like divide it up like um for example on a Monday if I'm making like myself a drink at home like a coffee I'm like okay I'm gonna take a clip of this I know I can reuse it later either in like um a random reel with like an audio where someone's speaking or if I ended up doing like a a little like week in my life or day in my life type video where I just like photo dump stuff or like a bunch of clips into one reel. Um, I feel like that's been pretty effective for me. I just try not to overthink things anymore or plan it out because the more I plan, the more I uh, like, I guess, put pressure on myself for things to do well. And then I just end up getting disappointed. For sure. That is like the exact opposite to how my brain works. Um, but like, I'm honestly really envious of you because of that. Like, I <laughs> like I wish I could like kind of thrive without a plan. Um, but that is like so alien to me. That's like, it, but it's awesome to see that you're doing really well. So like, when you do film those random clips, do you have them in like a folder? Like, do you have all of the stuff that you film for random things like that you can reuse, like organized in some way? Or like, how do you guys keep track of all of that stuff? Is it just living your camera roll? Um. I've been telling myself that I need to start organizing my phone. Uh, right now, my camera roll is just all over the place. Yeah, mainly it's just That's video fun. clips uh, that I plan to reuse or like photos of like a painting, like 20 of the same photos. Um, I, yeah, I really need to go back there and clean it up. But I think because my phone hasn't maxed out on the storage capacity yet, I it hasn't been yeah, a problem you're fine. <laughs> yet. But um no, yeah, I feel like I need to start making like a folder of like B-roll clips that I can reuse. That way I'm not like scrolling for like days to try to find that clip I took last year or something. Yeah, honestly, I just like I really love your just like very like laid back and like more sustainable approach to kind of content creation because sometimes I get comments um, or like I have like this general like sentiment that if I'm not making art every day, like I'm less of an artist, but that's just like so not true. Um, And the reality is that like, like you were saying earlier, you can post one um, painting of like a pic, like one painting of an art project, sorry, one picture of a painting. Oh my God. Um, (laughs) And like people aren't going to see it, but if you recycle that and you turn it to multiple pieces of content and then you just like think of it as like resharing a portfolio that you're building over time, that's like so much more sustainable um, and like much better much better for you that that totally makes sense um yeah that sounds awesome so speaking of content I was actually watching this reel that you posted like last week and you were sharing um like the kind of income stream breakdown of how much money you're making um in your part-time business like first of all thank you for sharing those numbers that's super useful and like probably really handy for a lot of artists um and you're making some money from like Instagram reels, which is like now, of course, over um, YouTube AdSense, Etsy and like affiliate links. What really interested me, um, what I thought was really fascinating was the money that you're making from UGC content. Um, Do you want to kind of briefly explain what UGC content is and like how that's fitting into kind of your business plan? Uh, Yes. Um, But first, I want to say thank you for making your uh, YouTube videos on like finances at being oh, an yeah, artist. of course. Because I, I think yours was the first one I saw on YouTube. Because back then, I feel like I never saw anyone speaking up about money. And um, yeah, especially not on Instagram or TikTok. And 
yeah, when I saw your YouTube video, it kind of inspired me to start like sharing it. Um, but I focused on Instagram because YouTube uh, just takes a lot more energy for me. For sure. Um, yeah. So yeah, I want to say thank you for making your videos. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah. But as far as uh, UGC content, um, I'm actually pretty new to it. Um, so it kind of just like stumbled upon me and fell into my lap per se. Um, so it happened um, a month ago. I was in the middle of moving. And during that time, like it was really hectic and I had to close my shop. Um, Etsy is typically where I make most of my money, but because I was in the middle of moving, um, I didn't want to focus uh, on having to promote my shop and then figure out how to sh like pack orders during the whole process. Yeah, so I, that's like a mess. I yeah, yeah, totally get it. So I was like, okay, I'm closing my shop, even though it might hurt me and uh, my income. Like, it's okay. Like, I have a job on the side that will pay my bills. So it's okay. Like, um, I can take a break. And so um, I think I was creating content even though my shop was still closed even though I wasn't making any new artwork um I was just recycling old clips um and so I think I made one of it was oh, like how I record my reels and uh, my videos on there because that's like the number one question I get asked all the time so I was like okay um I have the items let me just um post that video and then so I posted the video showing the equipment I use, which is like this lamp that I have on my desk, a tripod that I use for my phone, and then just the old propping your phone on a random object. Um, and so like those three different methods, like I shared it in the video and uh, it kind of blew up on TikTok. And eventually people were asking me like about my lamp. And I was like, oh okay i didn't think like it would be like a hit and uh, yeah is uh, it the canvas lamp by any yeah, chance is it that... was a canvas lamp. i used to have that lamp it's a great lamp hell yeah yeah and it was like a, a gift i got for my birthday a couple of years ago for my friend so like i was i didn't expect people to like be asking me about that lamp so i was like okay i made like another follow-up video um about the lamp and then i had oh i looked into like the brand canvas i was like i wonder if they have any affiliate links um uh, because typically i don't like to, i don't really promote um like people like buying certain items so it's like it's mainly like just my own products like my stickers my art um yeah i was i wasn't really like thinking like oh i need to start selling other products to make commission um so yeah, so at the time like i knew nothing i was just like i'm gonna go look on their website see if they offer anything and surprisingly, they had like an affiliate program. And so I signed up really quick um, because the TikTok video was blowing up and everyone was asking me about the lamp. So I was like, okay, let yeah, me go. Yeah, you gotta like capitalize on that, on that movement. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, let me see if I could get like my friends a discount or something. Because um, a lot of like my art friends too, they're like, oh, I should get that. But it's an expensive product. Um, yeah, it's like two hundred dollars or something. Like when I got it, at least in like twenty twenty, it was like two hundred. Yeah, bucks. it's like yeah, it's uh, it's not cheap. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to see if like I at least get a discount for my friends. Um, uh, I wasn't even thinking about like getting, making any money off of it myself. So I applied to the program. I got a discount code right away, and then that's when I made the follow up video. I was like, hey guys, I just got an affiliate link. Here's my discount code. Like for those that wanted the lamp, like here's. A couple of books off and then that video blew up um and that's where i got like all the affiliate money that you see um so it's yeah. part, part of the lamp and part um i finally made like a amazon storefront um links um because everyone's always asking me about this baguette wrist rest that i have on my desk and um so i was like okay might as well start linking that stuff because i get asked about it left or right so i was like okay I put that stuff up there. So like over the month, that's uh, what I ended up making from the Amazon storefront and the lamp affiliate link and discount code. Uh, and as far as G uh, UGC content, so that's user generated content. Um, 
it was through Canvas, again, the brand of the lamp, because um, I guess they really liked my video. So they reached out to me saying um, if they can use my video to post it on their Instagram, because I had only posted it on TikTok. And they wanted to Got use it. it for a certain number of months um, mm -hmm. and to be able to use it as an ad uh, for Instagram. So if you guys see it on Instagram, uh, it's don't worry, I got paid for it. <laughs> I've been getting like I'm a lot of seen that ad actually. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it several times too. A, a lot of people reached out thinking like they're using it without my consent, but no, I got paid for it. Mm. Um, so basically, yeah. So UGC content um is essentially like when you create content for other brands to use. Oh, uh, yeah, your following doesn't matter because you don't really get tagged. Um, you're not linked to that content. They post it on their platforms and like they're not tagging you. Um, you don't need to post it. So your following is pretty much irrelevant. You don't have to have a large following for that, which is why a lot of smaller creators lean into that. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, it it's pretty new. It just happened uh, out of nowhere and it couldn't have come at like a better time because I was moving and I could really use that money at that time. Yeah. So it seems like it's more of like a like an income stream, like a really a means to like grow if you're not being tagged in it. So like it might be a really good way for creators to make money if they're smaller, but they're not going to like build a huge following from it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Interesting. How did you like so you mentioned that um, you got started with Canvas, like they kind of reached out to you. It was kind of like this like like thing that kind of fell on your lap. Right. That's happened to me a couple of times, like with um, new Masters Academy. I made a video about like their like learning platform and then they were like we love that video like we want to sponsor your stuff and I was like whoa amazing um and that like kind of took a long time to come together but it was like a great example of, like a small business sponsoring my stuff or like previously had been like large companies um do you want to do more UG stuff in the future and like are you thinking of connecting with like platforms or agencies or like things that might match you with other brands or are you thinking more of like going with a more um kind of like tailored approach trying to find companies that you already use the products of um, let's see i guess um since yeah i'm super new to this and like i don't really like promoting things i don't use um i totally can totally yeah i and so I, for that reason i feel like i've just been waiting for brands to come to me and like keep mm -hmm. my fingers crossed that it's a brand that i like um, so as of like uh, this year, like I feel like this year is when I've had brands that I actually use and like and consume that have started to reach out to me, um, which has taken, I feel like, so long to get here. Uh, and I do want to like lean into that more because I feel like if I'm able to make more of my income creating content for other brands and not necessarily have to like sell my products all the time having to like promote it every week just to get some sales in every week um would be pretty nice um because it does get pretty exhausting um having to promote your stuff all the time and having to yeah create new products um so you can have a shop update oh uh, because for me right now like so much has been going on in my life that i haven't had a shop update this year um I've been struggling a lot with manufacturers, so I haven't really made any new products as of late. And so all my stuff that I'm selling is from like last year. And mm. I'm, I've been pretty lucky that I guess TikTok is still pushing my stuff to new people. So they still um, find a way to support me. Um, but I feel like if I'm not constantly pumping out new stuff, like making new products, like it all slowly like start to decline. Um, as far as like my income goes for Etsy. So if I could somehow like, yeah, make more money and just create content for other brands, that would be pretty nice. It would like alleviate the pressure of myself and having just to perform all the time. Yeah. And like, plus like, I don't know. I feel like I get a constant critique of like, Kelsey, your content's like sponsored. Like you're not really an artist. You're like advertising other people. And it's like, okay, bestie, I see where you're coming from. I really do. But I kind of don't, but I really do. Um, but it's like, listen, like getting paid and like not having to worry about like meeting rent means that I can hire an editor or like 
actually justify spending more time on my art. So really, it's just like it's funding the creative process. And I feel like people don't really necessarily fully appreciate that. But that's that's awesome that you're finding a way to make make this work. Um, do you have plans to transition to kind of becoming full time over the next couple of years? And like, what are the income streams that you really want to build or like focus on to get there? Um, as of now, like I, I just enjoy just balancing everything. Um, and maybe in the future, it would be nice to like do this full time and like know that my business can sustain me and my lifestyle. Um, but as of now, like I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm good um, with like where I'm at. Um, only because I feel like if anything were to happen, I always have my job to fall back on and like, like you said, like help fund all my creative projects because uh, you like yeah people don't realize that like not everyone is like supporting themselves fully from their art like you have to do some other side projects or have side jobs to support yourself uh, and it's not always uh, I guess the greatest idea just to jump into it and hope that you make money out of it I try but to that's take, terrifying like, that is so scary. So yeah, I try to take like the more, I guess, realistic approach and like um, have something to fall back on. And that way, yeah, you're not putting so much pressure on yourself because if a year goes by and like your stuff don't grow, like I I would rather like just take like small steps forward than have to like take steps back. And that's just like how I'm approaching my art journey at the time. For sure. Yeah, I I totally get that. And I feel the same way. Um, Yeah, like when I took my like whole art and like YouTube thing full time, I was actively applying for other jobs. I just like wasn't getting them because we were in the middle of, I think, Omicron at the time. Um, mm-hmm. And it was just like, OK, like, I guess I'll figure out a way to make this work because this is like the thing that's most promising. Um, But yeah, I mean, if you're able to have like extra money as well to this, like this awesome side hustle that you feel critically filled by, then like that's that's incredible. Um, yeah, and I feel like there's a lot of like um pressure to go full time, but you don't necessarily have to if it's not if it's not right for you. And it sounds like you're in a really good spot. So that's awesome. Kind of one of the last questions that I really wanted to ask you was like the tips that you might have for other folks wanting to grow right now. I know that you were talking about how it was easier to grow when you were just starting out in like kind of 2019 and 2020 when we had like that huge growth with the pandemic. And like, I definitely felt that my channel grew a ton during that period. Um, but knowing what you know now, and like, you're still growing, you're like still like doing all of this stuff. Do you have advice for folks who are just coming up right now um, and things that they should do, like best practices, kind of high level strategy, et cetera? Um, I know most people don't want to hear it, but Reels is what got my account to grow. Um, I know like we don't want to be content creators and that's fine like we we can be an artist and content creators on the side but yeah kind of like leading into that will allow you to I guess to grow faster I mean I'm sure like you can grow without it but in my experience um since like reels have been pushed um even now like yeah I have what over a hundred thousand uh followers on Instagram but if you look at my static posts, like just the photos, they don't do as well as video content uh, does. And so if you want to grow and be seen, I feel like the easiest way would be to lean into that. Uh, and I know like some people just want to grow right away. So like that would be my tip if that's like what uh, your goal is, is to just have your accounts like blow up as fast as you can. You have to lean into video content creation. If not, like, yeah, you can stick to just photos and stuff, but it might take a couple of years um, because I I stopped growing for a couple of years and it wasn't until Reels um, came and I was more consistent with that where I saw growth. And I also, like, um, I'm trying to balance a couple of platforms, not just one, um, will help a lot because you never know, like, what will be more successful for you? Um, like for me, I was avoiding TikTok for the longest time because I just couldn't get the hang of it. Um, it just felt like so weird because I was just uh, only an Instagram user. So when I hopped on, like it felt like 
so uh, foreign and like uh, I didn't know what how to use that platform. But once I got the hang of it, it ended up being a platform that helped me grow more and what allowed me to grow on Instagram. So I think just finding the right platforms to use, um, it could be, yeah, TikTok, Instagram, Reddit, uh, YouTube. Um, there's like multiple platforms that you can try to juggle and then see what sticks. But obviously like video content is what's going to win, at least as of now. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like I have cross posted the same thing on YouTube shorts versus Instagram. And like sometimes, I mean, always the results fluctuate wildly. One can get like 20,000 views and like one gets like barely anything. And then the next one gets like 60,000 views on Instagram. And then one gets like 10K on YouTube. And like it, it's always different. I have no idea how it works, but same. I think you're totally <laughs> right. Like cross posting is like, it's the way to go. Like you have no idea what's going to work and what's not. Um, you were talking about earlier how um, difficult it's been to kind of incorporate filming into your routine when you do make art. But obviously, like for artists that don't want to become content creators, just like getting used to having the camera on is like really crucial, right? Like getting to a point where you can forget that it's there is really awesome. Do you have like anything that you've done or like tips that you might want to share to kind of getting used to filming and like that process, like kind of getting a handle on it and making it a habit? Um, yeah, so for me, um, as I had like mentioned uh, earlier, I don't really like filming like my whole art process. And back then, I thought that's what we had to do. Like we had to record from start to finish, which is pretty mm. draining. And if you don't have a large like takes up a lot of space. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, you don't have a lot of storage on your camera or on your phone. Um, it's gonna be a headache. But yeah, so eventually, I learned that like you don't need to record every single part of your art process now like a trick that i do is i'll literally record like a couple seconds from the beginning and like a couple seconds in between or and then like at the end so i don't even unless i plan to like do a whole youtube video for it um i don't record all of it it since uh i already know like instagram my videos need to be like fi like 15 seconds or less I already know, like, okay, I don't need to record a lot to show, like, my process for this painting. Um, and if, um, but, like, for those that, like, don't like to record themselves or, like, find it difficult, another trick that I, I use, I even made a reel about it, um, is pretend that you're painting or that you're drawing. I had, like, this gouache painting in my sketchbook. Um, I did not record the process because... I had just moved and I felt so rusty and I didn't want the camera on. So once I like finished the piece and I actually ended up liking it, I was like, okay, how am I going to post this on Instagram? Like, how am I going to like reuse this content to not only post like a static photo? So then like I got the supplies out that I used. Um, I had used like gouache and like uh, colored pencils. So I was just like coloring in with the colored pencil. And then I just recorded a couple clips of that. And then, oh, uh, yeah. So it looked like I was painting and drawing, but it was actually already finished. And people, amazing. Yeah. People wouldn't have known. And then, like, I think I put that as a caption in the video. And they were like, wow, I need to start using this trick. And it actually works. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And then, in terms of like, I don't know, like the nitty gritty stuff that I'm sure we're going to get a lot of questions about in the comments, like, what do you use? Um, do you just use your phone to film? And like kind of how do you find like, the trending audios? And like, I don't know, the more like kind of basic questions, like a quick run through of like the specs or something. Yeah. So yeah, as far as like reels and TikToks, it's all done on my iPhone. I upgraded uh, a year ago. So I have like an iPhone 13 now. Um, back then nice. I was using like my iPhone 10. But yeah, I've just been using my phone this whole time. And um, that seems to do the trick for me. Um, I kind of, I don't really use any other apps to like edit the videos prior and then putting them in. Um, I think for me, I guess it feels like it's more work. I'm sure it's easier if you plan to like use that video on multiple platforms. But for me, like I'll just make it on Instagram, uh, whatever video I plan to put together. And then uh, 
before I post it, there's like a button on the top and I save it. So it saves the video uh, without the watermark. So then you, nice. can re- you can use that and post it on TikTok. So that's how like, I post on both uh, without it having the watermark and looking not too pretty. Um, and so that's like my trick. I'll just make everything on Instagram first, save it, and then I'll post it on like TikTok and YouTube shorts. Uh, as for Emma's uh, audios, um, before like I would like look for trending audios like with the little arrow along at the bottom and um I find that like if I don't use them right away I like either like I'm already behind on the trend or whatever and then I low-key get sick of hearing that same audio over and over again so like same. I just don't even use it anymore unless yeah. it's like a peaceful song that's like okay like and fine like I it's not going to get old I mean, like, I'll use it but if it's like a speaking audio where like I've heard it like 20 times in a row I'm just like okay maybe um I'm a little too late on this it's okay I don't need to force myself to use that audio um yeah but back then when I was growing like I I would use them and it does help um but if you're at a point where like you're happy where your account is at um uh, I just use whatever audio I feel like fits like my videos or like the mood um I tend to lean into like more like peaceful sounds and like just chill vibes uh versus like someone shouting <laughs> like in an audio yeah um but as far as that like I try not to like um uh, pay too much attention to it um because then I find myself overthinking and then I'll spend like an hour looking for the perfect audio and then I end up not posting the reel to begin with um uh, so that's how like I go about sounds and stuff like that. And I think you can you can yeah. save them. You can save them too. So like I on Instagram, I have like a folder of like saved sounds. So like I'll just go through mm. like the really old ones at the bottom and like just use that if I really can't find anything that fits. Um, nice. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. I mean, I'm like a an Instagram real noob. Honestly, <laughs> I'm just getting you. I can do it. So this is great. This is great for me personally. Oh, and another question I get uh, asked a lot too for my videos. Um, I always get asked like, "What filters do you use?" So like, if you look at like my reels at the bottom, there's like little like stars typically, and it shows you like the filters people use. So if you're ever wondering like, "Oh, uh, what are they using to get like this color or the color grading?" Um, if there's like a little star at the bottom, it's because there's it's a filter within uh, Instagram. So that's like the one question I always get asked. Um, I use like the same filters all the time just because it gives it a bit of a mood and sometimes at least back then before I moved I didn't have the best lighting so it made my quality look a little bit better Uh, but yeah that's like my advice for anyone trying to make like a nice aesthetic videos nice yeah and I mean that wraps up my whole list of questions you were great this was awesome Um, to kind of wrap things up do you have any questions for me like stuff that you want me to answer like any anything literally anything uh, yes I actually did uh, just I guess how do you manage like your YouTube um like schedule and like posting because like you did mention you you were posting like a lot and like y- even to me now like I feel like you post a lot I, like obviously I know this is your full-time job um but I guess back then when you were balancing everything um like how did you balance life work and uploading yeah. on youtube honestly that's a question that i have for myself I, like i i think i was just really motivated um and kind of like like you were saying how that motivation um to like make money from this really helped you kind of overcome your fears of like being really introverted and not wanting to film yourself um i just like had this fire like lit under lit up under my ass like to just like do stuff <laughs> yeah. um and so i did but it was, I think, not sustainable and necessarily healthy over the long term. And a big part of like thing that helped was that my content wasn't as high production as it is now. Um, there like wasn't as much that went into it. And like I was working and like from home and I was taking classes online. And so I could just kind of like in the middle of like my three hour 
art history lecture, I could turn off my camera and like film a painting, like low key, like just kind of like secretly like listening to it, but like actually doing other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so there were like a lot of like things like that were like, OK, like I work remote for an IT help desk. If no one's like actively asking for my help in the chat, I'm going to like film this video. And if they do, like I'll pause recording and like, you know, answer their little question or whatever. But it was like just like multitasking a ton of stuff like I could be clocked into work filming a video and also attending a class at the same time and just like somehow my brain was able to go in all those different directions and I don't think that um I could do that anymore or like I think my brain is just like different now I think I just don't have that kind of attention span or like ability like divide myself from so many like different pieces um maybe it's but in terms of my schedule now <laughs> yeah in terms of my schedule now it's a lot of like okay um I'm posting at least twice a month, hopefully once a week. And a lot of the just like varying different formats of my content. So like this interview will be my video for the week. And like, I can get this done in a day. Like we're, t- we're talking for like, you know, maybe one, two hours. And then I'll get that sent off to my editor, which has been a huge help. Like having someone else like edit my stuff for me has been amazing. Um, and then I can get everything ready for him. And then he's over in the UK. So he edits like in a totally different time zone. And so my morning is like his evening ish. Um, So it's just like much more seamless, I think, than it used to be. And because like I vary the formats, like this is kind of a low effort format for me, like low effort, quote unquote. But it means that I can kind of have um, like a studio vlog that's going to take like weeks to put together kind of at the same time. So still kind of multitasking, like kind of layering projects over each other in terms of like the timeline for it but just trying to juggle things as best as I can um but yeah I mean I think I would be not nearly as consistent if I didn't have like contractual obligations and like brands that were sponsoring my stuff (laughs) like I'm still able to kind of replicate the deadline that I used to have in school with brands and I don't know if that's like maximally healthy but it's worked really well for me so far I mean yeah I guess it's kind of good to have like someone to hold you accountable in a way it's kind of yeah. hard like if, if all the motivation has to come from you and like you're responsible for your deadlines sometimes yeah we end up not getting anything done i feel like i i really yeah. when i had well uh, uh, adobe project too like um i think i had i don't know how many weeks to do it but like i got it done right away and i'm just like why can't i do that with my own stuff <laughs> yeah Somehow, like, the work just, like, fills the available time. And if I set myself, like, a really short deadline and someone's, like, actually there to hold me accountable for that, it will somehow get done. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's just, I think I just procrastinate too much and I should somehow get better at setting deadlines for myself. I don't know. (laughs) It's a work in progress. I feel like as long as bills get paid, like, it's fine. Um, I don't know if that's great. But, you know, whatever. Um, Was it hard? Um... Because you mentioned that you have an editor now. Or was it difficult for you to, like, kind of, well, let people, like, start helping you out? Like, letting go of, like, some yeah. control of your process? For sure. When I was um, even, like, considering hiring an editor, I knew that um, I wanted to, like, weed out people that couldn't fit my kind of aesthetic right away in the application process. So. What I had people do was I filmed a video the week prior and I had all of the stuff, like all the footage and all the assets still lying around. So I was like, okay, to all of the applicants, I was like, here's this video um, that I made. Here's a link to it. Here is the finished video file. And here is like all of the like disparate parts, like all of the footage, all the creative assets. What I want you to do, um, I said to the applicants in an email was like, Okay, like what I want you to do is take this video and just make a better version of it. Like here is the bare minimum standard that I want you to achieve. That's my version. Any like thing that you can do that you think is better um, is like a plus. Um, So just kind of like show me how you would edit this video if you were like my editor. Um, And they did that and it weeded through the pool of applicants like so fast because some people just like did not follow the prompt um, or like read the email. Other people like added like lens flares and like cinematic <laughs> zooms and like, like bomb <laughs> sound effects. And I was like, <laughs> you went off, but in the wrong direction. Um, 
other people added like wild filters and I was like this is not what I asked for but thank you for showing me Mm -hmm. um and my current editor Tomas just nailed it it was just like perfect it was like yep this is exactly the thing that I want you fixed all the problems this just looks this is just better than what Mm -hmm. I made um and that was just like I think if I ever hired someone else for something I would like give that kind of exercise and it was really like kind of simple I think for me and everyone else because I gave them the finished files and like all of the stuff they could see exactly how I did it um and it weeded everything out really fast and so I think that kind of um application process made it a lot easier and then also kind of like it goes down it comes down to like who you hire and if you can communicate to them like what your vision is and actually feel comfortable saying hey this doesn't work can we fix it Mm -hmm. um because like I'm really anxious I have a lot of anxiety and I don't want to tell someone they did something wrong, especially if it's like a really small thing. But I think that relationship is really necessary because you're kind of trusting them with your creative vision. And that's like a really kind of vulnerable kind of place to be, right? So you want to make sure that you have a relationship with your freelancer or your editor, whoever, that you can say to them like, hey, like this might be a really small change, like insignificant to you, but it's important to me. I want you to change this. And yeah, so. I think I've tried to kind of just like establish that kind of relationship where you feel comfortable talking about that. And then I try to pay them very competitively. So like they, um, I actually had to process this like today, but they earn like a set percentage of the ad sense for the first three months of a video. And then I pay them like a flat hourly rate and I try to give them braces and stuff and be like, you know, do you want this early? Like whatever, um, super flexible because I was a freelance editor. And so I know like how, tough it can be when it's so like infrequent that kind of income streams are to be like as clear of a communicator as possible and yeah I think I don't know I think working in retail and customer service and like kind of having been previously a freelance video editor um, I have a lot of the like kind of experience of I guess how to be a good boss like having experienced it from the employee side that's cool no it's interesting to like see like or see like you grow and like now that you have an editor like hopefully you know a lot of us aspiring youtube artists that want to get there like um that'll be the next steps that we can think about Uh, because for For sure sure. me i guess editing wise it was never my favorite thing i don't know why for youtube it just felt like so much work um at least right now it's a lot of work i'm not like in a place where i can't hire anybody so for now like i'm just gonna post uh my usual of one video a month (laughs) i feel you yeah i mean especially like when you are editing footage of yourself um and like your own voice and stuff sometimes i just like cringe so hard that like i feel like i exit my body um when i review footage that like of me that i'm filming and it's like ooh, and it's sometimes like really silly like my bangs will be like here or like there'll be like one piece in the middle and I'm like I have to completely refilm that video that's unwatchable (laughs) and my boyfriend watches it he's like that's fine you're crazy like what are you talking about (laughs) and I'm like is it though um so because you notice everything (laughs) right because I notice everything um and so just like having someone else do that for me has completely eliminated that failure mode where I spend way too long making a video that like I could have just like settled for the the other footage yeah it's yeah it's much better um and I'm really grateful that I'm in that position and yeah I think that I hope that other artists are able to get there because it it has been really transformational like just allowing me to have more time so yeah there any other questions that you want to ask me before we before we wrap this up oh no I think those are my one of the only questions I have at the time (laughs) awesome yeah so I want to thank you so much again um for letting me interview and like hanging out um this has been great thank you i uh, feel honored to be on your channel I, i've been watching it for like a while now and yeah i remember Thanks. coming across yours it was like yeah the streams of income one when you were like sharing all the details and i'm like oh my gosh no one's ever done this before and that's when like i started watching all your other videos so thank you it's an honor awesome. to be here and to be a part of your channel of course. Yeah, it's been awesome. Um, if you are watching this, 
Um, please go check out Marlene's stuff, her Instagram, her TikTok, her online shop. All of that will be linked down below. And um, yeah, go check out her channel. It's it's a good time. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you so much <laughs> for hopping on. And I hope that we can chat again soon. All right. Definitely. Bye.